What is up, you guys? Welcome back to another Jump to Zuka. As always, joined by Josh and Jose. If you guys don't know what Jump to Zuka is or the Shonen Jump contest that's going on right now, let me explain it to you. It's a special contest. It's open worldwide for the first time ever for its 100th anniversary. So it's a huge contest. And Shonen Jump is looking for the next big and great manga. And they're letting everybody worldwide submit a one shot, which your one shot has the chance to be reviewed by some of the biggest names in the manga game. I'm talking author of Dragon Ball Z, author of One Piece, author of Blue Exorcist, My Hero Academia, Slam Dunk, and the folks over at Tezuka Productions. So it's a huge opportunity. And in order to lighten the load on those wonderful, wonderful people, they asked us, they were like, hey guys, listen, it's just, it's too much doing a chapter a week just by yourself. We don't have enough time. So please just go through, read them, tell us what's good. And then they'll just probably pick the winner that we end up picking later. So it's a nice little symbiotic relationship we got going on. Mm -hmm. Yes, obviously. <laughs> so this week, we're going to be doing three of them. And we've been doing viewer submitted ones. We're going to take a little break from that. The competition ends in a week. So I think September 3rd is the end date on this contest. So we're going to go through. The only metric it lets us sort by is most viewed. So we're going to pick the top three of the most viewed, which is Xenotype. That's number three place. And that's the story by Gray, art by Odysseys. We're very familiar with those guys. We have uh, one of their previous manga actually won one of our mm -hmm. episodes. Then Headhunter's Iliad, that's the second place, and that's by Logmore. And then Akai, which is holding the number one most viewed, and that story by Afrene Robinson and art by Apeng, I believe is how you would say that. And those are the top three most viewed. So if you're going to be submitting manga, those are kind of the three that are holding the crown right now as terms of just most hype. Doesn't necessarily mean they're the best, but we're about to tell you if they are or not. So without further ado, Josh, we're going to have you go first. He's doing Xenotype, so go right ahead. All right, so this is a Return to Conquest comics. Um, it's kind of cool. So they chose to stay, uh, start actually in the middle um, of what is this grand ongoing battle between a newly developed hero, Esper, and the Black Diamond organization that's filled with these demonic changelings known as Xenotypes. So um, just a quick note, they've, and I, I just want to bring it to everyone's attention, um, despite being in the middle of the story, though, they did this like terrific job of spoon-feeding us information on the lore um, so it was story and lore, story and lore, not here's a bunch of lore, then go into story. So basically we begin in an abandoned warehouse where our main character, Esper, uh, who has this ability to rewrite his DNA through the awakening of his biokinetic ability. Um, he's now fighting the main distributor of the super steroid, Pandora, uh, the xenotype, Acker Belts. Um, they refer to him as Black Billy throughout the story from here on out. And his gang, Goat, so basically, Esper is able to easily dispatch without killing this uh, this gang, and uh, it's like a gang of a thousand people or so, and they're the ones distributing all the, the drugs. Upon confronting Billy, Esper is uh, met with one of his weaknesses, and this is fighting women. So apparently, he just got one of those code of contacts: don't hit women. We are kind of told that Billy is controlling these Nighthawks via telepathy, and they've also been doped up heavily with the Pandora drug. So they're super agile, super strong, and they've kind of just got uh, Esper on his toes. Um, despite all this, we kind of go back and forth mentally what he's going to do. Esper is then able to just quickly come to terms and initial his initial hesitancy and is just able to subdue them quickly. This whole victory is super short-lived because it's revealed that Goat was actually a thousand of the city's most influential and affluent youth. So all the top people within the city, their kids were controlled uh, through this drug and through um, Black Billy's uh, telepathy. Basically, we get the plot reveal of what are the what they were trying to do here the final straw after all this berating that basically it's esper's fault for all this stuff find out that um one of the nighthawks the three girls that were fighting uh esper a moment ago is actually uh the teen idol and essentially like a secret love um of esper or something like that they kind of allude to it we're not sure just yet uh but astrana alon he kind of throws her to the side and esper just runs right into billy starts fighting him head first. They kind of exchange a few blows, but Esper is able to get the upper hand. And what appears to be Billy's like final breath, um, he calls out for the Black Diamond Xenotype Deathwing class Gardura, who's this just massive demon hawk thing, uh, which then grabs Astrana and then flees him away immediately. Esper then valiantly chases after Gardura. He's able to kind of shake him off though, um, drops him on a, a ongoing car, at that moment, Black Diamond reinforcements arrive in the form of a helicopter, start shooting missiles at him. He's able to dispatch him, but he's kind of lost uh, some ground with Gardura. So in order to catch up to him, or at least slow him down, he uses this 
hyper cutter technique and is able to cut off some of the wing of Gardura just to slow him down a little bit. Then Gardura pulls the classic villain card. He goes to a schoolyard just conveniently located next to an explosive canister and he lights it on fire with his flame breath. Esper shows up. The kids are fucking morbid and they're saying, hey, are we going to die? To which Esper, who's apparently like a teenager of sorts, is kind of just like, what the fuck is wrong with these kids? No, I'm going to save you. But he's kind of talking to himself like, maybe I'm the one that's going to die here. So he uses a psychotic or a psychic shield of sorts to encapsulate himself in the bubble. And when the explosion goes off, he's obliterated. Like, he's, he's not doing too good. But kid gives him a little candy bar and gives him a pep talk. And he's able to get back on his knees. We then cut to Gardura transforming into what can be assumed as his human form. It's one of the uh, goat hideaways. Uh, we then are met with Black Billy up at the top of uh, one of the rafters, talking to him in his human form, saying, you idiot, you've dragged fucking Esper here. He's going to find us. You weren't supposed to think kind of situation. To which Esper immediately blows through the door and says, yeah, your boss is right. You're a fucking idiot. I'm here. Black Billy then tells Gardura, you know, fry him. And Gardura just unleashes this huge flame onto Esper. And Esper is walking towards him like a total badass. But all of a sudden, he's burnt to a crisp. He's just a skeletal mass. And we're essentially like, oh, shit, he's dead. And he just falls to the ground. Then we cut to this, like, inner monologue world of Esper. And he's talking to this voice, uh, which kind of alludes that he's just the instinct and sadness that he's locked away this whole time. Esper being desperate to kind of fix what's going on, he allows this instinct and sadness to take over. And he transforms into this like super brutal version of himself, to which he immediately disappears from Gardura's sight and then rips Gardura's head off before he can do anything. Uh, then Billy tries to transform into his xenotype form. And Esper tells him basically like, I already fucked up your crystal. Uh, you're not going to be able to change anytime soon. You're cannibalizing your body, to which Esper just shows up and cleaves him in half. And then Billy's manifestation of hatred and sprite comes out of his eye, and it's essentially this weird cockroach thing. And then Esper just crushes it, and that's the end of Billy at this point. So we get like a nice little sweet ending uh, where Estrana uh, finds out that this is her friend Felix or some acquaintance. Uh, they never really go into description here. But um, before we know it, he's losing his suit and she immediately kisses him. And that's how we end the story. So what did you guys think? I thought this was fucking fantastic. Art was good all the way through. Like, same thing we said about Crossroads. Easy Um, to follow. I really liked the game plan of the villain. I thought that was really cool where he took control of all the heirs of the companies. And like, yeah, you you fucked up, dude. Sorry. It's like, that ain't even going to be on us. And I was like, all right, that's clever. I like that. Um, yeah. There was a one piece symbol on the warehouse and then his friend in the flashback is reading Tokyo ghoul. Um, so that, that was really cool, which they had references in the last one. Oh, okay. Yeah. And one thing I didn't really realize or really hint on is they kind of show when, they, like you're talking about with his friend, they kind of show him prior to him being like a superhero and he's kind of getting accustomed to his powers. And it seems like they're both mangaka or like they, they, either enthusiast of manga or they have written themselves because he also does talk to himself like hey this is just like a manga oh yeah you need yeah. to draw like this etc um so that was really cool yeah but and i know this it, this isn't like an ongoing i think they're continuing this already this like this is shot. something that they they already do okay um but my favorite favorite part which i'm so happy about because i usually hate an anime he reveals to his crush almost immediately that he's yeah. Esper Man. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, I'm yep. so glad that we're not going to yeah. play around with that for fucking eight more volumes. 20 episodes. It's exactly. like, I'm so happy. So it's like, in just the first one, very in they kiss. I'm like, hey, hell yeah. Let's yeah. get that on. And, and he was real- in the fight scene, like when he's swinging around the town, very Spider-Man-esque. Yeah. Yeah. He, he doesn't have Spider-Man powers, but they create this, like, Spider-Man illusion, which I don't know if it's just, like, uh, an homage to it. I mean, he what, is, like, whipping it's... around yeah, might be, at yeah. one point with his little things. So it's, like, which... very Spider-Man, very, like, save all the children, have the funny mm-hmm. quips. Very, yeah. fi- which, and I mean that in a good way because Spider-Man's awesome. So. Yeah. There's, like, one point where it's, like, get off of me. He's, like, nah. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> just shit like that cracks me up. And it, it's really cool because uh, like i said at the beginning they give you some lead up they're like hey you know i, I chose to be the world's first superhero and etc yeah. but for the most part this is in the middle of the story um which is like an interesting choice because most of these are either the first and second chapters uh so this is cool because this has given us like a little grand arc 
uh, going on, and it didn't feel like I missed out on a whole lot. Like I, I was able to kind of catch up. I would say I would lean more in the camp of this being the route to go, where it's like mm-hmm. let's show them the exciting bit. They kind of they kind of get to have a pass because they're doing a superhero kind of like manga and yeah. s- superhero villains. They love telling you their plan. They exactly. love it. So it's like Monologue it's very easy for them to be like, hey, it's in the story because they're doing the classic villain rant. So it's like they yeah. kind of get to do the exposition as part of the thing, and it's yeah. totally okay. Exactly. So I, I thought it was good. Um, I'm going to give a hot take. Hot take here on this one. Okay. I thought Crossroads was better. I agree. I liked yeah. I, uh, I, I this one was more, much yeah. more you hop right into the middle and it's mm-hmm. fun and they got the act, cool action. I liked Crossroads. Yeah. I, I think Crossroads had this like whimsical thing. And because Xenotype is an ongoing thing, I think there's like it wasn't compact. It wasn't this like explosion of cool shit happening. I didn't feel like the writing was worse or anything. I just feel like there was a lot more effort, effort put into Crossroads and it was so it was just cool. I like, wouldn't say I feel like there's yeah, more yeah. effort put into either one, but I, I just like the, effort. the general my... setup of Crossroads. Like, that's more fun. You can play around with it more. It's kind of a bit more meta. Um, that was much more unique to me than this one. So I like the Crossroads setup. I also just think it would be very, very funny for Crossroads to win and not Xenotype. Yeah. So yeah. I just be... think that would be hilarious. Yeah. GG. Okay, cool. So that was Xenotype, story by Grey, art by Odysseys. We're going to move on to our next one, which is going to be Headhunter's Iliad by Logmore. And that's going to be yours, Jose. So go ahead. So right away, we start kind of like in a space alien kind of like Colosseum-ish looking thing. Uh, But it's a fight between two um, what they call their headhunters or like their assassins who are all contracted to kill. um, And then either like a villain, a warlord, or just someone of uh, criminal uh, but right away, it jumps into the action with them fighting. Um, and you meet this woman who kind of seems a lot smaller than the villain that she's fighting. And uh, the whole thing is being televised. Um, it's got some pretty cool action scenes, too, like where he pops out a whip and then it's a secondary weapon and she breaks it. But to cut to the chase, she literally cuts him in like three pieces with her hands. Like it looks like a claw almost that she does. And then it kind of like jumps to the next cut where it's a bunch of like, uh, I'd say teenagers, right? Uh, and they're uh, watching these fights almost like you'd watch like uh, fights on YouTube or something like that. But it's, uh, it's a whole thing. And it's uh, super popular on this asteroid planet that they're on currently. Uh, but these, these two guys, they're, they're huge fans of um, HHL. I think it's uh, Headhunters League or something. Yeah, that's right. Uh, but, you know, they're kind of talking back and forth. And then this other character walks in and his name is Odysseus. Uh, does he write crossroads i don't know i don't know (laughs) or does he do the art for crossroads (laughs) it's completely different from this one but it's 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 great artwork nonetheless to which they exchange a couple words to where you find out that uh shipments are late and stuff because it's his fault and they're technically at work uh when the big boss man comes in and he starts kind of yelling uh he's telling them like hey shipments are late and it's your fault because you took the keys home which you know if you work with people sometimes that happens classic (laughs) mistake in a warehouse Yep. Uh, he takes the keys away, gives the other two guys some of the packages and sends them off their way. And her friends are like, oh, sucks to be you. You are you kind of have to do these all, all walking. And uh, they're like, remember, it's Wednesday, though, uh, which is a huge importance. So throughout the whole next couple of panels, he uh, goes by, he starts dropping off his deliveries, and he's telling everybody, hey, it's Wednesday. Watch out for Wednesday. I love this part of the manga where like his customers are pissed at him. He's like, Ah, yeah. It's Wednesday. <laughs> it's like it, like every time he's like, I fucking hate that you guys deliver. It's like it's Wednesday. Yep. <laughs> it's like, yeah, and he's exactly. just like it's Wednesday. Mm. But he finally pretty much finishes most of them, and he's just kind of like enjoying a little snack, and he's just chilling when this giant warp gate opens up, and you find out that Wednesday Star Warp Gate Wednesdays because this uh, planet asteroid that they're on is very rich in minerals, and so mining companies come in and uh, strip it pretty much. To which you find out that the boss uh, has is a has a huge admiration for I think it's Ur- Ermine, yeah, Ermine Owl, yeah, Ermine Owl, and so he comes up with this whole idea of how he's going to deliver her a very special package that only comes from his homeland, and it's like a super rare thing that you can't get anywhere, and that'll create like publicity for him when she gets big and all this other stuff that's going on. And so his other boys return and they're like, hey, we're done with our deliveries. And he's like, what? How could you? Like, you know, the deliveries. And then he's like, he realizes who he gave her package to. 
And so our main character currently, Odysseus, is on the way. He sees the press conference. Oh, keep in mind, Odysseus does not like HHL. Yeah, hates at him. all. He absolutely does not like it. He says he hates it. Uh, he says they're all a bunch of good for nothing people who are just killing for money. Uh, so back to the story. She's in the p- press conference with the two brothers, uh, Andre and Wandre, and and they're just uh, drilling brothers who I guess are kind of like sponsoring her and they're holding the press conference. And Odysseus just walks straight up to her, hands her the package, and is just like here. Uh, to which she's like, okay, I didn't know what this was. And then the press is like, oh my god, she's so cool. She she got a local uh, business to come deliver to her. She's supporting. It's super cool. And everyone's like, oh, that's cool. She opens it to find out that they're exploding frogs. Classic. Which are very endangered. And everyone's immediately like, how dare you order endangered frogs? Like, who is this? Blah, blah, blah. And he immediately is like, oh, just sign this, please. <laughs> Stick- and sticks it in her face. Uh one of the brothers gets upset and just punches the kid right in the dome. Drops everything, and then they, like, disappear. And then it cuts to uh, his friend. He's like, oh, he's like, what happened? And he's, I think he tells him, he's like, oh, um, I delivered to Ermine. And he's like, here, I met her. And then gives him the clipboard and the pencil. And he's like, you go get it if you want, then. Yeah, because she refused to sign, so he couldn't actually deliver it. So he's like, oh, she went down this alley, like, you can go find her. So he goes and he tracks her down, only to see that she actually just slaughtered the the, the brothers. Just cut them into pieces. I, I think they're okay. They look like they still had fear in their eyes. Yeah, but I mean, the dumbass uh, literally says, those guys are in 15 pieces. Classic. Out loud. Says it out loud. She turns around, she's right behind him, about to kill this kid. And then Odysseus walks up back there. He's like, hey, I forgot to give you the pen, dot, dot, dot. To which she's like, you again, I'm going to kill you. And then she goes for that same attack that she used on that big alien uh, to kill him. Uh, But it doesn't hit him. And I couldn't tell if he dodged it or not, but it seemed like he dodged it. Uh, Then he, she goes on to attack him and he's like, oh, I've seen these moves before. Oh, one bit of information, though. While he was doing his deliveries, he does mention, uh, or he does overhear a conversation between two people saying how there's a, an old hand hunter who was super vicious, uh, loved to kill, but got banned because he would kill everybody, including the camera crew. That's weird, Jose. I, why, would, why would you bring that up? That's really weird. Nani? Well, it turns out that this person, <laughs> this person we thought, uh, we thought was a really nice person until she killed the brothers, Ends up being Polyphemus, who is that person, and Whoa. he works. He works so hard to get that reputation. He's like a good guy and everything, but he's like, nah, it's this murderer. Addressing, he's like, oh, you've seen all these moves. Well, you must be a huge fan. Back to Odysseus, going, oh, I'm not a fan. I hate you all. The only person I ever really admired was Arizu. He admires her because even though when he was young, he went to steal money from her and stab her. She still saved his ass from being eaten by some sewer monster. True and she hero. Was, yeah. She was really kind and said some nice, thoughtful words to him. Uh, so he holds her in high regards and will hold any hunter up in high regards. Then flash, flashes back to them fighting where the Polyphemus uh, decides to use his new moves, actually gets him and pushes him down, to which prompts that uh, backflash to him. Uh, meeting her and her saying that not to change and to be the change you want to be kind of thing so he goes back and fights and he sets up this cool trick where he uh attacks this jacket that has all the like frogs in it and causes the explosion and everything and he manages to to catch the sphere and his friend the whole time was watching he's like whoa this is like watching one of those fights he's like you could really be one of those headhunters and he's like nah i don't like it but he's like I've thought about it, though. And then he's like, well, you're just as good as them. So I think the point of the story is that if you watch a video enough, you'll be just as good. Yeah. Wow. What a life story. That's what you got from that, Otaku, I would say. Uh, <laughs> jump to Zook is enough. You could be a reviewer just like us. <laughs> Qualified reviewers. And that's how it ends, right? It's yeah, like that's it, literally uh, – it ends with his friend being like, oh, you're, you're, you're totally cool. You should totally do this. You're just as good. And he's like, yeah, I mean, I've watched enough videos. I could – I get the Yeah, you find out he this. applied for it, right? He applied yeah. to be a headhunter, and they were like, yeah, you're not cut out for it. And then it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, like... and, the, and the last yeah. scene also says the same thing. Odysseus yeah. continues to pre- uh, preserve the sanctity of his last favorite blood sport. So, yeah, his least favorite blood sport. So that leads me to a question right at the end here. 
does he have a favorite blood sport? He Dave, probably oh. does. This is the least favorite. This is all the weirdest fucking questions and analogies, but we are going places that no other review channel will go. Um, there were a couple of things in there that made me really laugh in this manga. Um, mm. When they first started talking about Polyphemus, I fucking read that as a throwaway line. It was like, oh, yeah, what about the Polyphemus uh, yeah. guy that got banned? I didn't think that, that the Ermine or whatever, Ermine was going to turn into Polyphemus. It didn't yeah. occur to me at all. Mm. Be, and I kind of liked Ermine. I was like, yeah, oh, okay. I she was cool. She's cool. That's cool. And then it's like, no, she's a bad. That's not even a real person. Fuck you. Yeah. And when they were fighting and uh, his friend, uh, Eno, when he sees how strong Odd is, which is what he keeps calling him for Odd. Uh, Odd short for Odysseus. Yeah, Odysseus. Um, he gets upset at one point because he's like, you guys always make me carry the heavy boxes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, was just like, I was like, that's so good. That's so good. It's like, I just love that. Because that's so something. It's like you have this super strong guy, and he's like, yeah, I don't want to carry that one. You, you can do it. He's like, the strongest you, you it, guy. Yeah. You got it. Yeah. Big muscles on that one, you know? Yeah. But and it's I really like good. The, I like the interaction at the very beginning fight where it's basically – what's his name? The He shouts it. Oh, yeah. It's, it's like the first thing he says. Conquerors of the Three Moons of The first Mach. fight was great. first fight was, was really great. Good. But I love that he has like a little bit of a interaction with the people recording because it's yeah. basically he's being headhunted and he's like, "Oh wow, she's actually pretty strong." And they're like, "Don't look at us." Because they, they they have they have yeah. grades, right? They have grades on the headhunters. Yeah. Um, yep. And then they have um, you could do live viewings. They mention if you get big yeah. enough, you could uh, pinch potentially have live audience coming to watch your fights. Yeah, um, everything's virtual currently due to some you know pandemic that's going on in this world. They that's don't not really part of this world, but <laughs> yeah, uh, but, yeah, <laughs> but yeah. in our world it would be. Yeah, but it's this. I thought it was like it's kind of interesting. Um, they kind of basically take the whole bounty hunting sort of setup and televise it, where it's like you, basically you're a hitman. You're a hitman, yeah. but you're on TV. Yeah, and you're essentially a hero, even though you're still yeah. potentially a. A bad guy, but for it's the like most part. It, it's 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 interesting where it's like you are basically a hero, so it's almost kind of like My Hero Academia if it was mainly focused on televising it. Yeah. But then it's like they're actually not really good people; they're just mm-hmm. like kind of thugs, is what the main character calls them, who take out. They, it's like he basically says they they would they would kill you too if they had a contract for you. So exactly. it's like they're just fucking thugs. It's like they're not doing it to be good; they're doing it for the money and all the wrong reasons. Yeah. So shit, uh, you guys have anything else to say about that one? I liked it. I mean, the I art was too, great, yeah. and it had like a cool, unique vibe where it was anime-ish, yeah, but also like kind of westerny. I don't know. Yeah. It felt, it yeah, felt really cool. I, I agree with that. It I was, love space was, shit, so yeah. that, that was that, I thought yeah. was good. That was just right up the alley. Yeah. Okay, so that was Headhunters Iliad by Logmore. Um, check it out. We skip over a bunch of stuff. Uh, there's really good fight scenes in both of the two we've done so far. So definitely check them out if you want to see them for yourself because it's you know it's a little hard to describe those. We're going to move on to the last one, and this is the one that holds the number one spot for most viewed. Okay, so it's Akai Chapter Zero is what this one is labeled, by the way, just in case you want to know. And the story is by Aphrone Robinson, and art is by Apeng. And immediately when you start reading it, they tell you it is the pilot chapter. Which I feel like is something we've not seen with any of the other ones. Mm-hmm. There's been a couple that call themselves a one shot, cup, whatever, but not so much use the term pilot. Uh, I just thought that was interesting. Yeah, and that's this... an expensive license. <laughs> and the setup for this mega is a, is a little different as well because the first few pages we immediately we get the usual explanation, which is almost like it would be in a real manga, yeah. where how to read it. You know, yeah. we get that immediately. It's a couple of other ones have had that as well. Then we get a Q&A part with, like, what it's like working with the Anime Bay studio mm-hmm. and, like, what that's like. And then we get a part, which I thought was super cool, because normally uh, you have to wait for, like, the art books and stuff to even see some of the stuff. They kind of show you, like, how they do the background art and kind of mm-hmm. the work in progress on that stuff. That was cool. And these are the first few pages. This is immediately what you're hit with. I was like so excited i'm like is this what they're gonna be doing like that kind of art style for yeah. the backgrounds like that looks sick as fuck but yeah it did look very like like that's i don't know if this is already being put into an anime i don't know if that's mm. what they're showing but it's like it's very oh. much like here's how we do the background Web-tuning whatever it. whatever um then they give us a little bit of a setup it's like saying akai has a setting with a japan slash american feel to it but with super powers like kind of involved like supernatural flavor um, and they basically just let you know, here's what to expect. And then they also give you Akai's birth date, which is 0229, 2008, in case we needed that for some reason. I'm, maybe that'll they come do that a lot in anime, though. 
Yeah. He's a Pisces. Yeah. And I feel it. I honestly <laughs> just nails it. So we get to go right in. Heaven's Gate only accepts students with the most gifted potential, genius latent ability, and aura control. So that is more set up. Six kids are chosen from each class to compete in Heaven Gate Academy tournament each year. And then we get some weird, like, leet speak after that, you know, where they do, like, partial number and partial uh, actual, you know, letters. Yeah. I threw, threw back to the old Counter-Strike days on that one. I don't know what was going on. And then and then we kind of get just hop in. We hop in to the middle of the Heaven Gates Academy Festival Finals because everybody loves a tournament arc. Why not start mm-hmm. there? Everybody loves it. Fantastic move. So we see who I presume is our main character, judging by the main cover. He is fighting someone who is clearly evil because he has the black eyes. He has the Huge. black eyes. It's the giveaway for the bad guy. And about after every two pages of fighting, we get like a weird black bubble page where it gives kind of like ominous text where it says only five will arrive for the first one. Then only three we'll see for the second one. And then we see our main character kind of popping off. And I got a little confused this part. I would love to know if you guys could figure out what was happening. He kind of like punches a hole in the air or like the blackness around him at one point when he's fighting in the very beginning. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I don't know what just happened there because the guy he's fighting is in the air. Yep. Yeah, he like yeah. kind of explodes or like releases his energy. But then we see like a light go up into the air, but then it doesn't hit him. And then it ends with another beam going up in the air. I don't know what was going on. at I, that. I, it felt like he's just hiya and shoots like a key blast. But it was like, it was just, so out yes, of order. It was oh, like, yeah, I felt a little, there's a, little a page off, before yeah. where he like kind of does oh, it, but then right. it's like, we don't, I don't, I don't know what, what happened there. I have no idea. It looks like Vegeta's explosion wave for a bit. A little bit. That, that's a great punch. way. Yeah. He, he does, does punch, punch. In the air, but then he goes back to the powering. Yeah. Uh, Maybe I'm like, he Delaware looks like smashed. he exhausts himself at one point too, but then it's like the next time he's just attacking again. So, it's the Delaware smash, dude. <laughs> and it does read uh, left to right at this point with the artwork on the bottom because it goes smaller, big, and then full panel. See, that's out. why I was confused because I was reading yeah. right to left. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know. Then That's how it's supposed to be. I saw the front page. So, Maybe it was flipped and yeah, yeah, I, to flip I, I don't know. But then we get a last like fucking bubble page. You are the one. And no one else is here, just you. And then we see Akai turning around to like a void area, which we've seen many times. And he sees a mirror, and then he looks very shocked, and he wakes up. Which is Huge. the classic setup. It's like, you see him doing a badass thing. Oh, that's it's actually all a, dream a dream or a foreshadowing of something that's going to happen later. Been here, done that. That's so classic. Uh, Akai turns... So Akai wakes up, right? Late for school. Another classic one. And you quickly forget he's late for school because he stops for a bite to eat at oh 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 oh, oh, oh. okay I don't know our owl oh, oh, oh. Just, who knows so he orders his usual and we see the man working in the shop he's not alone working there because he works with a floating pair of hands and they kind of it helps him prepare the food kind of like Adam's family style yeah, so like- don't know if he's related to the Adam's family but that's how that works. Man working at the shop asks if he will be trying to enter the trials for the Heaven Academy Gate or the Heaven's Gate Academy again this year because apparently he's tried twice already. And then there was a little bit of like grammatic, maybe didn't make sense here because he have not awakened as of yet. Yeah. So I imagine it's just he hasn't awakened of it as of yet is what that was supposed to be. We find out Akai is about to be 13, which he looks way fucking older than yeah. 13, but that's just classic maybe. anime style again. You know, it's like uh, Tite Kubo. Yeah, yeah, fucking people looking 20 years old in their 13s. Look at Chad. Exactly. Yeah, he's 16. And they kind of make it feel like as soon as you turn 13, it's the end of your career. Like, you should just <laughs> stop. And I feel that. I feel that. So, a guy wants to qualify for Heaven's Gate Academy, of course. And he wants to become a Sancho. Which, as nicely explained, is a special invite to the summit in Mountain Peak. Yeah. So, Never brought up again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he brags about needing only one year to become the Rida, which I don't know what that is either. So he Maybe wants to become the Rida. Like Ho- Hokage. Possibly. And he says that and falls asleep. So oh, can, can, and we, if, can we talk about the sidekick and the kick side, you mean? The, oh, yeah, the kick side. Yeah. No yeah. copyright Very infringement whatsoever. Okay. You can tell that this guy, guy clearly, he's probably, which we do kind of know because you see the author at the end. He's probably our age. And, mm-hmm. like, the sidekick was the bomb. So, yeah, he has a knockoff sidekick is what Jose was alluring to. And that's how he bro- pulls up Gaggle. So, we're, we're skirting all the lines here. And he falls asleep. And 
I just want to remind you guys again. He was supposed to be on the way to school. Yeah. Okay? yeah. He's so, narcoleptic. But he better fucking be at this point with how late he's being to school. <laughs> because he falls asleep, and then we see a man appears behind him who we eventually find out he's the principal of a high school, and he's there to drag him off to school, and he's pissed. And with that, it says chapter zero ends. Okay? But we're like halfway through at this yeah. point. So it's really not. It's really not done. Because we move on. We get a flashback. Some thug kids are making fun of Akai for losing. And Akai punches the leader in the nuts and then immediately takes off, which that's my fighting style right there. Amen. Yep. So no need to stick around. Punch him in the nuts, dip out. He bumps into some Merlin-ass looking fucker. And he gets frozen in place. He just, and it, then he it, has to say, Shazam. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say that. Yeah. So Merlin freezes him and he basically says, don't worry, our king will reveal himself soon. So I guess they're both waiting for King Arthur. I don't know. Hey, I, I don't know if he got dragged yeah, into that. Yeah, yeah. So We got jokes today. <laughs> so the chase continues on. We get a new player enter the fray. He comes out of nowhere, punches one of the thugs, just absolutely decks him. And we find out it's a guy's cousin named Times. Yeah, perfect timing. Oh, yeah. Times, yeah. Uh, I tried to get that joke out fucking <laughs> way quicker than you perfect said his time. name, but you fucked me. So they both dip. They immediately they do a hit and run. They both take off. The next day, we see Akai thinking of his upcoming test and how he's like, uh, I really hope I make it. I've studied a lot on how to like finagle this test, but I can clearly think of four to five kids that are way more talented than me. So his odds are not great. And that's when a raven comes by and I guess just throws a letter into his window. Just like, cop! It just throws a letter <laughs> into Harry the Potter. window. Yeah, but with crows and the crow doesn't stick around. It just like fucking dicks off and throws the letter yep. in there. Got shit to deliver, dude. <laughs> so he opens it up. And we find out it's a letter from this girl named Yuna. And Yuna basically becomes like an ethereal form in front of him and reads the letter to him. That's which sick. Which that is, is just like it's the hottest sex scene I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> like, how does that work? Is that like is like Star Wars where it's like a hologram and it's pre recorded, or is she like live chatting to yeah. him? This might be like a one and done though, so when she's done reading it just kinda of goes. So, like, you know, what if she records the message, then really quickly you're listening and you look under her skirt? What are the logistics on that? That's what I'm saying. I just, I need to know. The, 200 yeah, IQ. It, is it just the camera angle? Yeah. Or is yeah. it a whole I need to know the inner details oh. on this because I really don't know. There's a lot of inner things you need to know about, apparently. Um, <laughs> so, Yuna's here to basically nice. just give him encouraging words. Basically saying, hey, give it your all. And, hey, just a reminder, everybody says you're a failure, but you're not as much of a failure as everybody says. Which, warming. <laughs> excuse the hell out of me if someone said me that. I'd be like, fuck you. Okay, first of all, I was like, I don't need you reminding me that everybody thinks I'm a fucking failure. She's hot as fuck. She can say whatever the fuck. Like, whatever. That's good. Yeah, okay. So, apparently... Josh thinks that's Josh okay. Josh is okay being bullied okay, by a hot girl. Finish is ethereal girls bullying. <laughs> Don't fucking kink shame me. <laughs> so Akai heads out. Doesn't think much of that. He's more focused on Merlin. He's like, that was really weird that I ran into Merlin. And we get this weird scene of his, like, he's fucking with his wallet, what I presume is his wallet. And yeah, it literally like broke. coughs up his money. Like, coughs it up. Just like, yep. And he's like, yep. well, it's the thought that counts. And then we get an end scene. That's that one. I don't know why that was in here at all. Just yes. maybe to show that his wallet's cool. I don't know yeah, what was going on. He has no money. There. Yeah. So we pass forward to whatever time we're at now. Akai is out looking for a homeless man that is usually located in the same spot, but now he's not there. He can't find him. He's freaked out. Doesn't know where this guy is. And we get another. This is just a short scene, and it ends with, quote, what happened at the preliminary exam. And I don't know what that's supposed to show. I don't know what we're supposed to get from that. Yeah, That was just a weird out-of-place scene again. And that's pretty much the end, but I have more. I have more to talk about because it's the end of the story manga, but there's really three or four more pages left. So we get, like, a character introduction page of people, of some people we've seen, some we haven't seen. Like, we haven't seen, like, probably four or five people Q on pin. this page. Yeah. So... The ending was very manga-like, where like it shows you like the people, but then they are showing you people that aren't introduced yet, so I was a little confused. And then we get a couple of summaries at the end, which is even weirder. So I'm going to read you one of the summaries. Uh, we get, Akai lives in a world where society ranks your worth based off a of skill slash aura. So far, only two of his classmates are known to have passed the preliminary exam to get accepted into uh, what we now abbreviate as TAG. There is one more mis mystery student who has also passed. In case you guys didn't know, in this society, Akai is what we would call a work in progress. He has the vision, 
but will he have the discipline to continue on the path of becoming the writer? So the writer is very important to know what the writer is because I do not know what the writer was thinking of the writer. <laughs> so <laughs> we then move on to stuff about the author as well as a nice little color photo of the guy that Akai was fighting where we see he's got blonde hair, he's got the evil black eyes, and he looks like he's got a bunch of guys in shadows around him. Very reminiscent of when you first see the Akatsuki. And I don't know if you saw Josh, but I immediately saw it's like, oh, I can't wait to tell Josh. The author in his About Me says that he started off as being the number two Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm 4 player in the world. And that's what I, led to yo. his path today. So I did a classic Josh move. I saw that we were finished, and yeah. this was the last one I had to read. I was running behind, as per usual. And I saw, oh, it's just filler shit. I'm out. <laughs> Sam then fucking calls me out like this, and he calls me out like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it was like, I saw it. I was number like, no. two? Yeah. Which oh. is... It's like we played the fuck out of a lot of those games. We played all, all of them. Four is the one started, we played right? the least, and yeah. I think that is the worst one. I hate to yeah. say it, but uh, we did not like that game. So congrats so, to him, but that game fucking sucked. Yeah, you have a level of cancer in your body that I'm worried about you. Also has best <laughs> well, movie quote. You either die a hero or you live long enough to become the villain. Harvey Oof. Dent. That's the words to live by. <laughs> um, so you would think that's all. We're on the about the author part. But then we have another page at the end where we get more pictures of the characters. But this time only people we've seen and the people we haven't seen are blacked out. So they did this one correctly. Mm -hmm. And we finish on a last summary. So we're getting like last page, another summary of the story in case you guys weren't. And each summary of the story has been different. So this is the same, same thing, different. Let me hit you with it. A boy that was born on a leap year in God's garden society must embark on a supernatural journey to defeat a curse bestowed to him. Never mention that at all in this thing. I don't know what's going on. Akai is a young child with high hopes bound in a society full of undiscovered power. Being raised by his grandma in the Jex helps him develop a strong will. He will one day begin to trial to Heaven's Gate. The journey is a troubled one. The Black Orlov chain opens unparalleled events. Will Akai reach his ultimate goal, or will Akai bend fate forever? And that is the end. And that is it. So what? you notice all three summaries are very different. And I, I think, like, first summary that we read at the very start is, like, a setup. Yep. The second summary is, like, hey, here's what's kind of going to happen later. This third summary is, like, hey, here's stuff that we didn't show and that will happen later. And But they use, like, key terms, like the Jex, the Black Orlov. Like, I feel like... We're supposed to know what that is, but we do not. I don't know well, what the that Jex is. is the name of the first chapter where he finds the bullies. Oh, and I'm, yeah. I, I mean, you can no tell idea. the Jex is clearly like the slums is yeah. basically yeah. what I would go like. It's not a nice place to be in, but it's like the Black Orlov. I've never seen it. It's not the Owl. So, <laughs> so it's got um, weird wizards and three bullies. So, what did and you guys it's... think of Akai? If this is the most viewed one on Jump to Zuka, what did you guys think? <sighs> what? I yeah. love the art and stuff in it. The art was fantastic. Very good. Uh, I just feel that if he had stuck to one summary that he kind of wanted to use and not include all the other ones, it would have been better. I feel like I don't know what happened. Like we didn't. <laughs> so I got done reading this because like I was, I was kind of reading through and you know what this reminds me of. And I, I don't think it works best for this competition. It's almost as if you were going to pitch this to a company like, oh, I, get you. I would make this, like, let's say I was making a manga. I would make this exact sort of setup if I was also in the room pitching it. Because there's you. stuff where it's like, hey, look, here's how his daily life is. Here's the tournament arc, which we're going to get to eventually. And then it's like, here's some characters we're going to see later on. Because it's very spoiler. Like, here's the characters, here's the things, here's what he's going to do. But it's like, that's perfect for, like, pitching it to someone, you know? It's also, here's you have it unlocked. Yeah, here's all the subsequent plots yeah. that are yeah. going on. Like, like we've given you the main plot. And so far, like, I wish the author was in the room with me pitching it to me as I was reading it. Cause like, I just, oh, yeah. it jumps around a lot too. It's like, boom, yeah. boom, 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 boom. Where it's like, when I say the next day, it's like, who knows if it's really the next day, it just jumps. And yeah. it's like, it talks about the preliminary exams, but I think that's, I don't know if that happened or not. We, who yeah. knows? Uh, so that's what it read. It felt like a pitch to me, Yeah. which I, I get, it makes sense. Like, cause you're, this contest is kind of a, a pitch to these really uh, huge names in manga. But it's also like they're looking for a one-shot. 
I don't. So it is a pitch yeah. and it isn't because they, they really, they just want a one shot. They want a fantastic one shot that they can put into Shonen Jump. You know, like I like the premise of the story. It had this like Naruto vibe. He's got the ramen guy he goes to, yeah. but it's a donut guy. He's, you know, a strong fighter, but he's also kind of lethargic, lazy. You know, he kind of is like a, a no gooder, but he's also like a good kid. But we don't get anything else. Like there's no, they, the, like, they give more plot development in those little summaries at the end than they do throughout the entire story to so the whole weird. uh naruto influence i could definitely see it like especially yeah. when the principal comes and grabs him that reminded me of iruka grabbing naruto yeah, yeah. well he, he, he does, does thing. He, he does, does mention say, at the end like if it does remind you of naruto that's like on purpose you know he loves yeah. naruto which is fine i mean naruto's is fine. Fucking i great. love yeah. it yeah but all all i'm saying is i believe it's oda sensei that said it he wants something super unique yeah so i think that will work against you in this competition obviously yeah. we're not the ones using that as a criteria but i'm just saying he like in his quotes each of the authors kind of gave like a little quote of like a best of luck or here's what i'm looking for and oda's like hey i would rather see something that is super unique and crap rather than something that's the same thing over and yeah. over which is wild to me that you know you know Zenotype and uh akai they're like really well written they've got like a nice thing going on it's weird for me to see or not Akai, I'm sorry. I'm headhunters. It's weird to see Akai as disjointed as it is at the top position. I don't think it's bad, and I think it could be really good, but I, I just don't know what's going on. So I want to give a special weird. shout. I yeah. don't know what the manga is. Give me a second. There is a manga on Jump Tezuka, and there's only three of us. Obviously, we're doing the top three. There is a fourth slot, okay? So if we were doing top four, there is a manga called Icarus Rising, and it's by Brandon Chen. And that one was uploaded all of two days ago, and it's on the fourth slot. Yo! So, and Xenotype was also uploaded not that long ago. Both Akai and Headhunter Zeliad, I think, have been in the contest for a very long time. I recognize seeing those pictures when we were way back when. Yeah. Xenotype, out of the top three, is the newest by far. But yeah. Icarus Rising is rising. So yeah, at the time of recording, crazy. these are the top three. It should be worth noting. And so... I think we've talked about Akai enough. Let's go ahead and discuss which one we were going to pick for our winner because they are all heavy hitters here. So mm -hmm. once again, the three we did, Xenotype, and that's a story by Grey, art by Odysseys. Then we have Headhunter's Iliad by Logmore. And then we have Akai, which is a story by Aphrone Robinson and art by Apang. I hope I'm saying that right. I don't know. So, uh, Jose, any of them stick out to you more than the other? Which one did you like the best and why? For me, it'll be Headhunters. Um, I just like the... Like like Sam, I like the outer space stuff. I think it's super cool, but it's just kind of uh, it's it's just an interesting little take on um, like what a like a bounty hunter would do and how they're like technically bad, but then the kid actually applied to be it and stuff. It's just I don't know. I just kind of like the feel of it. Josh, so I really liked Headhunters. The only thing it kind of fell a little short uh, in the story because it's like, oh, could he be a head, like one of the Headhunters League? Um, and they kind of just said no. Um, so I'm not sure where they go with it and they don't really reveal that he has superpowers or anything, but it's like, he's able to keep up with these guys. So because I see Xenotype as this like large grand thing, I, I would go, go with Xenotype. It's got all the cool stuff and it's not done. Like there's a lot to it. Okay. Tiebreaker broke tiebreaker vote to me, baby. I or I pick a Kai and I fuck the whole system. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Obviously, my two front runners af after having just done, I feel like normally I like the one that you really have to pay attention to and the one that you're presenting, you lean a little bit towards. Mm -hmm. um, Akai was not really that for me. I thought that was a, a little confusing. It's not really yeah. well done in a one shot sense. So that one I would obviously drop immediately, which is weird because it's the first day. It's the top one. So yeah. um, then I'm left with Xenotype and Headhunters Daily, which are both fantastic. Both absolutely really good. Um the art in both of them are really good and i just have to go with which story i like the most which one i would want to see more of um and for me that's headhunters iliad you motherfucker that's headhunters iliad <laughs> i just like i have such a sweet spot for like that space fun I, area oh i like that banter he had though like with everybody yeah. he met and just just it was it was serious fun. but silly kind of thing but it's like both of them had good banter yeah. But yeah, like, they did. I just like the setup. Like, I, you know, I'm not the best person to say this because I don't watch airing stuff all the time. 
but I feel like there's a hole to be filled for like a sweet space series like with bounty hunters going around like Cowboy Bebop held that crown for a long time there was Space yeah. Dandy kind of did the the humor side of it I am so for Space UFC like let's fucking yeah, throw that shit space on there UFC. like let's do it because that seems like a lot of fun they could bounce from planet to planet you could see so many different stuff so many different because they do they do live events like he could run into different headhunters all the time and just like fucking hate their guts and find his vegeta out there somewhere i think that and, could be a lot of fun so congratulations to headhunters Elliot by logmore we thought it was fantastic but really all three of them were very good um you know we're, we plan to do this much more and more but it's ending this next week so uh which actually coincides with our regular mangaku which is our monthly manga book club where we do publish stuff or uh you know things that are already out into the world so unfortunately we won't be here next week for a jump to Suzuka, but we will be here for mangaku so check that out we're gonna be reading all of my hero academia vigilantes it's gonna be fantastic Ooh. if you don't know anything about my hero academia Vi- uh, my hero academia vigilantes it's a spin-off prequel of My Hero Academia, and I personally like the characters in it way more than I like the characters in My Hero Academia. So check it out. We're going to be doing all the chapters. We'll do spoiler-free review, and then we'll just fucking go dive right in, and you guys can find out if it's good or not. Thanks for watching. This has been the Jump to Zuka, the last week while submissions are still open. So get your submissions in. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe. It helps us out. It keeps us going. These have been fantastic videos. I've had tons of pleasure talking to all you guys in the comments. So leave us a comment if you have your own submission or if you have any questions, and we'll see you guys next time.